Hello, welcome to the chapter 6.3 video lecture series. And in the last video, we were going over example 4, conducting a hypothesis test to see whether smoking negatively affects a person's ability to become pregnant. And here we're looking at a sample of 678 women. And then we figured out whether they were got pregnant or not in the first cycle trying. And then we looked at whether they were a smoker or non-smoker. And we went over uh, the, at least half or so of the kind of hypothesis test. Again, here are the steps. I don't, do not want you to memorize these steps necessarily. We'll be given these. I want you to be able to go through these steps uh, given a prompt or scenario like this on the exam or the final. And we actually went through most of these steps. We have the null and alternative hypothesis. We clearly defined the population parameters. We wrote down the observed sample statistic. The standardized test statistic, we've got to be 2.123. And the new concept is we need to, we had to use this idea of a pulled proportion to get p hat, which is pi part of the standardized test statistic. Uh, we also made sure there are at least 10 successes and 10, 10 failures in all four cells, or in both groups, successes and failures. So we can use the normal distribution. And then we are now left with calculate the p-value and make a decision. And then write a concluding sentence. All right, so for p-value, I'm going to go to step key, normal distribution. And don't forget, we're looking at z equals 2.213. If I've got a z test statistic, we want to keep the mean at 0, standard deviation at 1. Uh, the observed standardized test statistic is positive, 2.123. So I'm going to click right tail on this bottom value right here. Change that to 2.123. Now I'm down. Is it 2.123? Yep. All right. So our p value here is 0 0.017. 0 0.017. And are we going to double this value or not? We go to the alternative hypothesis is greater than, so we are not going to double it. We get the p value is 0 0.017. All right, so what do we do with that number? Let's zero that. We're not doing that. We're looking at a confidence level of 1% significance. So we want to cook hypothesis test with 1% significance. So since p-value is greater than significance of 1%, we do not reject the null hypothesis. All right, now I want to write a concluding sentence. What does this mean? This sample data does not provide enough evidence to conclude that smoking negatively affects the ability to get pregnant at a 1% significance. can't reject the null hypothesis. So we can't say there's enough evidence to include the smoking negatively affects the ability to get pregnant. And you might think that can't be right. We know smoking does negatively affect uh, the ability to get pregnant along with a, a plethora of other pregnancy issues. But this is at a 1% confident or 1% significance. We did not get quite enough evidence. I'd say close, but not enough. We need to get some more samples, some more information. All right. Okay, so uh, what I want to do, just for a couple minutes before we uh, finish Chapter 6.3, talk about how you could use uh, GeoGebra, the second software package we're using, to help get um, your sample statistic, standardized test statistic, and p-value. So it, it's a little bit of a shortcut. If you could use the software, it helps with some of these, but definitely does not describe the parameters, state the hypothesis, and so on. 
So it's a, it's a good tool, and if you like using it, you could definitely use it throughout the rest of this class. So I'm going to go over to GeoGebra, click on that probability tab. Up here, we're going to click on statistics. And this drop down menu here, the, these are all the options for chapter six. We're doing hypothesis test and difference of proportions. All right, so we picked a greater than as alternative hypothesis. And I did my first group, P hat N, to be non smokers. So this was the 206 over 543. So in GeoGebra, I'm going to put 206 out of 543 for sample one. In sample two, I set to be the smokers, 38 out of 135. And if you click on enter, here we get the z-score 2.121. Again, it's slightly off because of the rounding. So it just rounds differently than we do. But we get the same p-value, 0 0.017 right here, which is the same thing we got, 0 0.017. So it's very okay to use GeoGebra to help with your um, statistic and your standardized statistic and p-value. Just make sure you go through the rest of the hypothesis test um, you know, on your own, writing that down with all the stuff needs. All right, that concludes the Chapter 6.3 video lecture series.